This week on Cruise In, presented by Cruisin' Times Magazine. Collector car owners put their heart and soul into their cars. Just got started and went overboard. See what I mean? This T-Bird is well-traveled. In the early 90s, it was in Ontario, Canada. An international success, I'd say. I bet you started working on this the day you got it. Had it 11 years before we really did anything to it. Now that's patience, plus. We can't do that because uh, it's rot. Mike shows you how to deal with rust and metal rot in Mike's Garage. Fire up the grill. And then they shot this really nice burger that'll <laughs> soon be mine. Cruise In, presented by Cruising Times Magazine, starts right now. Welcome to Cruise In. I'm John Shapiro, publisher of Cruising Times Magazine. We're at the 28th annual Earth Angel Super Cruise at the Fairfield County Fairgrounds in Lancaster, Ohio. It's a day long festival and fundraiser. Started at 10 a.m. and won't stop till 10 p.m. Let's take a look. 1956 T Bird, absolutely, I've never seen that color. What is it? We were able to do some research. It's called Thunderbird Green, not trying to be smart, Alecky but uh, we found out that only 4% were made in 1956 of that color. So it roughly translates to like 600 out of 15,000 that were produced. Have many, many people say, oh, that's not original, I never saw one. Well, I'm sorry to say, you may not have been lucky to see one of the 600 plus that were made. Incredible looking. Tell us about now, I looked around your car before and one of the uh, cool features, uh, the interior is just that sporty looking thing, but under your uh, visor, looks like. Who signed that? John Sampson. John Sampson uh, was a graduate of Purdue and wanted to get into the aviation field as a designer and couldn't find a job but landed a job with Ford and was just doing sketches of cars and he said he was paying the bills and that type of stuff and then all of a sudden uh, he was tapped on the shoulder one day to come follow this gentleman and he was put with two other guys and they were given the task to come up with a design that would compete with uh, the, the rumored uh, Chevrolet Corvette and uh, John uh, had the task of designing the cockpit and uh, last year in Sun City, South Carolina they had a show and that's where John Sampson currently resides. He's 80 plus years old spry as you can believe. I mean he came out and was we had about five or six T-Birds there and he was signing and gave us DVDs of, about his history and that type of thing and just did an outstanding job and signed the dash and also signed the hood. So he was on the original 1952 uh, Thunderbird T-Bird design. Uh, it was never purchased. It, what we found in research, it went to someone in the Memphis office and they took possession of it and it bounced around. We traced its history back to somewhere in the early 90s. It was in Ontario, Canada and then came to Detroit somewhere around 1996 and has been in Detroit until we purchased it a year ago, January. Well, we really appreciate you letting us look around in your car. This is just beautiful. Well, thank you very much. We, again, when I say we, my brother and I bought it together, so it spends six months out of the year in Newark, Ohio, and the other six months in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Oh, so, so it's a 50-50, wait a minute, tell us about that. Well, it's, it, well, my brother and I started talking about cars and just saying, hey, would you be interested? He's always been a car nut. He's had a Corvette, he's had the Porsche, all the, you know, kind of luxury, high performance cars. And he just and mentioned one day, would you be interested? And we started looking and, you know, drove all over South Carolina. And I found this one online in Lake Orin, Michigan, which is about an hour north of Detroit. And I drove up there and he said, well, would you put your half of the money on this one? And I said, well, yeah. And I said, but I don't know about your half. And I was scared to death. And he said, go ahead and buy it. So we plunked down the money and it arrived in South Carolina. He had not seen it. He had only seen the pictures on the internet. And I realize people do this every day, but when it happens to you, it's a whole new situation when that, you know. So you get it half the summer. Yes, sir. He gets it in the winter down yeah, in Florida. So it's a daily driver. I mean, he drives it two or three times a, day, a week you know, down there and use it. And we do it the same well here. It's not a trailer by any stretch. So if anybody's in, what is it, South Carolina? You Hilton Head, yes, Hilton sir. Head. Yes, sir. And you see this, say hi to Gary. Absolutely. 72 Olds. It's a Hearst Olds. It's a Hearst Olds. Face car lookalike. Well, tell us how you found it. What? It's a local car. It's Lancaster, Ohio. And I found it, uh, I don't know, I was driving by. Talk to the guy and see if you wanted to sell it. And of course, we came to an agreement. I uh, had it 
11 years before we really did anything to it that was in rough shape when we bought it. Well, you decided to make it into a, uh, you know, back to great condition. You got It was, yes, yes. It's in very good condition now. But uh, you decided to do numbers matching too as, as well the, as? The car was numbers matching and uh, it, uh, you know, we just, we had the frame out of it. Frame was in excellent condition. We didn't have much to do there. We had to replace the body because the body was in such rough condition. But it is an, a rust-free body that came out of the south. So, yeah. it, uh, so you used a second donor car as, as metal replacement? Just for the body, yes, yes. Everything else is what came with the original car, the now, hood. Give us a little history on the Hearst Olds as far as this year. They didn't make a whole lot. 72, they had started to detune these cars, and of course they weren't as popular as the, the higher compression. This is a lower compression, 455, hydromatic. It's got the dual gate shifter by Hearst. Uh, it has the plaque and stuff in on the dash that says it is a, a look-alike pace car, which was a uh, option, I think, that the uh, dealer installed on the Hearst bodies. And uh, it, uh, I don't know the exact amount. There weren't that many of them made in compared to the total. It's a sp Supreme Bodies. They would pull the Supreme Bodies white off the assembly line, Hearst would, and then they would convert them over for their purposes. And uh, it was a certain amount of specifications they had for the car. Uh, when they pulled them off the line, they had to have. So. That's how Hearst got a hold of it. Well, take us around the interior. Let's take a look at that. What's uh... the interior is mostly the rear part of it's original. We replaced the front seat covers, and uh, we replaced the carpet. Everything else is pretty much, uh, pretty much uh, the original interior. And then, how long did you take it take you for completion? I it was on again, off again. I took about four or five years to once we started on it to complete it. And we replaced the bumpers, of course, just typical things that we would need to replace. Weren't that now, bad. as far as the Earth Angel Cruise, do you come to that every year? I, I usually come to this every year if I'm in town, yes. It's a wonderful thing here. Especially yes, it is. Beautiful weather today. Quite a crowd, nice crowd. Let's visit Cruise In Marketplace. Tough Stuff Performance Accessories. All Tough Stuff products are quality made in Cleveland, Ohio using 100% new components. Tough Stuff has a complete line of underhood accessories for the custom and hot rod market. All Tough Stuff products meet or exceed OEM specifications. For more information, visit toughstuffperformance.com or call 1-800-331-6562. Next up. The mechanism for the convertible top is out of a PT Cruiser. Old meets new in this Superliner, coming up on Cruise In, presented by Cruising Times Magazine. Welcome back to Cruise In, presented by Cruising Times Magazine. If I had a Cruising Times coolest car of the show pick, it would be yours. 47 Thanks. Buick, tell us all the modifications. Well, we've laid the windshield back four inches. We've uh, pinched and cut the hood from front to rear three inches. Obviously, we made it open a different way. It used to open from side to side. Now it opens from the front. A uh, lot of you know, modifications. Got an LS6 supercharged, uh, Magnuson supercharger. Uh, got one off EVOD wheels. Uh, now, the wheels, since we're talking about wheels, they almost look like a kind of a cross between a Buick and a Cadillac, but yeah. well, how some did of the you do inspiration, that? some of the inspiration for like the the, the perimeter of the, of the of the wheel outside of the cap there was it, it reminded me of like the aluminum brake drums on the, some of the like the '53 Buicks had, and uh, and then also we put a, a floating mechanism in the in the center. It's got a bearing and a weight in there that 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 as you go down the road. The, the cap will stay level with the super liner on the side of it. And to get it that low, yeah. airbags or? Yeah, it's got air tech, air rod, uh, you know, all the way around. And you got swivel seats. Give us a rundown of the whole interior. Yeah. What's Well, uh, the guy that built it is named uh, Garrett Kitchen. And uh, he uh, built all of the interior and, uh, you know, built the car. Uh, the 
interior is like all you know handmade out of fiberglass all the seats all the door panels all the console everything and uh, then we've got a the mechanism for the convertible top is out of a PT Cruiser and uh, we added like five inches of width to the convertible top uh, itself and that roll bar that you see in there is like directly out of that PT Cruiser we never touched it <laughs> only it's widened I guess no it's not wide. widened it's, it's not, not that that's, is that's the, the original no kidding yeah. <laughs> now that is unbelievable yeah. now that I'm looking at it you're right yeah uh, trunk wise I noticed you've got a really cool looking trunk yeah well you know that was we, we asked Paul if he would if he would put like a suitcase or a trunk in the uh, uh, in the trunk and so he built a suitcase back there to you know make it look like you're traveling <laughs> and you do where, where have you been uh, been all over been to been to Detroit, been to Philadelphia, been to Indianapolis three times. I've been to Louisville, I've been to Tampa, I've been you to Kissimmee. you picked up some, some major awards over Knoxville, there. Knoxville, you... Nashville. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I've gotten, you know, several pro picks and I've gotten several of the, the picks that, that, are, that are done by, you know, NSRA. I've been to a couple of their shows. Now, in all that, the car's been done how long? About just a little over a year, uh, a year and a couple months. And of course, uh, You've got many more shows to come, and I'm yeah. sure you're looking forward to this summer. What do you? Sure. Well, hopefully I'll get to travel a little more this year. Last year I, I sold a house in Florida, and I had to go down there, and, I, yeah. and so I had to deal with that. So I didn't get to do all the shows that I wanted to last year, and, and I'm trying to talk my wife into going out to California because several people want me to go out there, and so that's that's what we're that's what we're shooting for. This car uh, was inspired by my then just conceived uh, baby boy. So I decided I was either going to build a hot rod, which I knew nothing about, been around motorcycles my whole life, knew very little about hot rods, or I was going to buy a Shelby GT500 brand new, keep it someday that was going to be his. So I started looking around, I started going to car shows, um, re really liked the, the 32 Ford. I watched American Graffiti when I was a kid. And I mean, that did it for me, you know. So in the back of my mind, I always knew if I ever had a hot rod, it'd be that yellow one that I saw on that TV show, Five Window Coupe. Well, you got it, only you it's know. orange. What color orange? What's it's that? A, it's House of Color, Tangelo Pearl Orange. Cheater Slicks in the back, which got legally... Yes, those are uh, Coker out of Tennessee, uh, Corky Coker. Anyway, I talked with them at multiple times on the phone, decided for this car, that would be the tire. White walls. White walls, yes. And there's a big motor behind you. Yes, the motor is a Ford 460 big block. It's got an 871 blower. It's got two Holley 750 double pumpers. Um, to me, if you're gonna have a car like this, it's gotta be open wheel, no hood, biggest motor you can get but make it look pretty because everybody's going to see it. And everybody has been today. I've been watching <laughs> yeah. people. It's like, you know, Yeah. now we got, let's go to the interior, walk us around the interior. All right, well, the interior, um, you know, I looked at everybody. I mean, I, I spent months and months of research. Um, I live in Canal Winchester, Ohio, which is a suburb of Columbus. I could have went anywhere and had the interior done. But luckily for me, I was able to find Portage, which is up Ravenna. I, and uh, which is like just 140 miles from where I live. So I looked at a lot of cars they did and every one of them I saw was just beautiful. So to me, Portage was the place this car was getting its interior done. Now how long has it been done? This has been done just over two and a half years. So you know? you've been cruising all over, huh? Well, I did my first year, I did good guys. Uh, I'm really busy with other things. Here, here comes your son right now, yeah. bring him over, come here. That was the boy that inspired the car right there. Come here, Jacob. Well, come here. <laughs> come up here, you wanna sit here? Yes, this is Jacob. This so is this, the, this so is, soon this will be his car. Yeah, someday this car will be his. And I had to let mama know that so mama would let me spend the money to build this car. So well, someday this car will be Jacob's. Coming up. Why don't you touch up all those little rust spots here, there, and everywhere on the truck? Repair damage from rust and rot, all next on Cruising, presented by Cruising Times Magazine. Now, 
back to Cruise In, presented by Cruisin' Times Magazine. Hi, I'm Mike, and this is my garage. A lot of us that are into muscle cars are also into the big trucks, the pulling scene, maybe the off-roading, the mudding, whatnot. And a lot of us take a lot of pride in our vehicles. My brother-in-law had a little mishap with his front fender where he uh, kind of tapped the tree. But he said, Mike, while you've got it, why don't you touch up all those little rust spots here, there, and everywhere on the truck? You know, a lot of places he had taken it to in the past had said, well, you know, we can't do that because uh, it's rot. Well, it don't look like that bad. But once you start picking at it and you start getting in there, it's way worse than it looks. You could take care of your truck as good as the next guy, and you're still going to have this. It, it's, it's inevitable in a salt climate. The salt gets behind, creeps. You can't clean the inside of this panel as much as you would like to be able to. You can try and prevent it, avoid it by doing some oil sprays, some rust preventatives. But plain and simple, no matter where you get, you're going to have that. Can't take it to a regular shop. Most places are not going to do rot repair. You have to find a restoration guy that can cut, weld, do metal. Do not ever let somebody say, oh yeah, well we can just take and we'll glue a panel over top because you're still trapping all that rust behind and then it's gonna rust your new panel out. Another place with little rust spots, bottoms of the doors. They look like they're just getting a little here. On the outside, well, guys, remember this. These little rubber panels that keep all the dirt from getting into your door jams, well, Look what happens when you pull that little rubber panel off. All that does is trap everything behind it. Your truck may look nice, but it's probably not as nice as you think it is. Be aware and clean underneath it because you let it go and that's what you're gonna have. A lot of times the water will sit right on that edge, your salt, everything, then it just kind of creeps and bleeds down into the seam. Well, to avoid that, we put a little bit of seam sealer over the seams of the two metals. And this way, it'll hopefully prolong that from happening down the road. Always look underneath there, keep it clean. That'll help prolong the rust from rotting out the bottom of your doors in the long run. Again, now with the rocker repaired, all new metal, complete thick gauge like it should be. Any seam got seam sealed. I also put a chip guard on the bottom. Anything, you know, bigger tires, more aggressive meteor tires, they will hold the rocks. Well, you know, going down the road, little dirt road, getting a, a little stone thrown at you isn't gonna usually do the damage. But if it gets caught in that heavy lug down deep in there and it gets whipping at 65 mile an hour down the freeway, then it comes out, usually it's gonna cause a chip. So that rock guard is gonna help that. Um, just keep it from so far down. I never like to go too far up because if you go too high, then it looks like you're trying to hide something, um, hide something that was done poor work. Uh, so I keep it nice and low so it looks more like a factory installation and some of the factories do do that. So there it is, all taken care of. She's not rusty anymore. Well, there's another project finished. On to the next one, and we'll catch you next week on Mike's Garage. Coming up on Cruise In. Well, I just tried to dress it up. She cleans up pretty good, and she's next on Cruise In, presented by Cruisin' Times Magazine. Now, Back to the 28th annual Earth Angel Super Cruise on Cruise In, presented by Cruisin' Times Magazine. So you were telling me originally this car is going to be black. The interior, the inside of the engine compartment, I was going to have black. Oh, I see. The stock color on it, 
but the fellow that uh, looked at it and was going to do the painting said it would look, he thought it would look beautiful red. It does, my God. I mean, under the hood, everywhere, panels, you got everything is either chrome or painted in the motor, so tell us about that. Well, I just tried to dress it up. Uh, I got just got started and went overboard. Uh, now it's good. You went overboard good. Let's go to the interior, because I, I noticed that you've got um, a special dash. I have the Dakota Digital Dash in it uh, that I put in there this year. All right, now I noticed that there's normally there's four holes for the for the gauges. Correct. But you got three. Tell that me what your- stock was four. And then what's your secret there? Show, show us that part. Well, uh, the secret is that you put Velcro on it and then you leave a, one of the holes that you're not using that, so that you can get in and work on the other stuff. Did you make that wood panel? Yes. So you, where'd you get it? I just went to Home Depot and picked up a piece of wood and started finishing it. And how long you had it and where did you get it? I've had it uh, a little over four years now and I, I found it in Hudson, Ohio. Uh, online, I uh, called a fella and he uh, told me to come up and look at it and I looked at it, drove it and just asked him where I can get a trailer, I'll take it home with me. And then you started working on it, right? Then I started working on it, it was in good shape and I hadn't planned on working on it, but uh, I just wanted something different so I started changing things. Well, that puts the wraps on another edition of Cruise In. I want to thank the folks here at the Super Cruise, the Earth Angel Foundation, and all its volunteers here at the Fairfield County Fairgrounds in Lancaster, Ohio. We'll see you next week on Cruise In.